Okay, so let's talk about some of the 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 fat loss pharmacopoeia, uh, the fat loss pharmacopoeia. So, um, I have friends that swear up and down by carnitine, L carnitine. I think they inject it. Is that mm -hmm. so? Tell me about that. So the L carnitine is um, present in red meat, and depending on your diet, you may or may not be deficient in it. And it is something that can help. Uh, um, incorporate free fatty acids into the mitochondria and help you produce energy and it also is implicated in certain indirect processes like ar content in the muscle which is some of the more fringe literature but it seems to in the presence of sufficient anabolic stimulation actually increase the expression of what you can get out of your testosterone input so this is the main reason why people i know use it and presumably why a lot of people use it that you know, too, is it's often advertised as get more out of less androgen, essentially. But does this work if you are getting sufficient carnitine in your diet? Like, yeah. Do you need super, super physiologic doses? Well, in general, if you're injecting 500 milligrams, for example, like you will be supra. So it's not something similar to creatine. You can make the argument that endogenously or through your diet, you may be get enough to satisfy um like maybe you're not going to saturate muscle stores but i mean it is it's not analogous to creatine but it seems to be at least in supplemental form and this is something you inject sub q daily depending on the volume because it is depending where you get it could be 200 milligrams a milliliter 500 a milliliter and you can only put so much oil sub Q or water sorry it's water-based sub Q before you have lumps so even though it's more easily absorbed it's still not something you want to be injecting milliliters of yeah like typically sub q shots you want so are we back in the same problem of like where are people getting this stuff typically compounding pharmacies or online or they're making it themselves because it's just an amino acid that you could just buy anyways so homebrew sometimes but the reason they're injecting it typically is Wait, because homebrew how are they sterilizing the water and I'm not, I'm not a chemist who's going to explain really how you would do it, but it's the same process by which you would make your underground steroids, presumably. So it's yeah, like, I mean, in other words, this is a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe yeah, this is an awful idea. Unless you know what you're doing, because some of them are like pretty, I don't know, intelligent, but I still wouldn't risk it even if I had the instruction manual personally. Yeah. So in general, though, there is pharmaceutical, not grade, but like compounded versions that are made in an environment that's been at least fact checked depending on the rigor of the pharmacy in question, of course, because you've done many uh, deep dives into compounding, yeah. which I recommend people check out. Yeah, we did it. I think we did an AMA where we covered the, the, the ins and outs of compounding. And even with compounding pharmacies, there have been enormous breaches of, um, of good manufacturing processes. Mm. And that results in contaminations of legitimate FDA approved molecules like corticosteroids that have led to literally thousands of deaths. So, you know, it's one thing when people are compounding things without good manufacturing process that you'll take orally because the gut is a lot more forgiving. Yeah. Um, but the moment you start talking about things that are injectable and now you are injecting something in yourself that's dirty, you know, that could be a huge compromise. So yeah, anyway, I, 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 uh, I hope there are ways for people to vet that stuff. Yeah. Um, how were, effective is caffeine, both in terms of its effect on appetite and potentially its effect on fat oxidation? By the way, I did. I want to touch on carnitine quickly. The reason people inject it is typically because the oral format is only about 10 to 15% bioavailable. So you have to take literally 10x the dose to achieve the same yield outcome. And then in addition to that, when you ingest things like carnitine and choline, there is a potentially unfounded, but still potentially concerning scenario where there is TMAO conversion. So oh, when, that's right. when you ingest a lot of carnitine, like four plus grams to get your yield, that is enough to actually have some sort of effect that has shown to have some hopeful AR content upregulation, which is still like a fringe thing you're seeking that may not be ultimately founded, you are using an amount that is going to have some level of conversion that you could avoid by injecting. Yeah. So you are averting the need to use as high of a dose. And in addition to that, you are potentially avoiding some level of risk from gut 
related circumstance. Some people use Allison with it to kind of like circumvent and try and prevent TMAO conversion. What's Allison? It's from garlic and it seems to attenuate TMAO conversion in the gut, but it's also like a fringe application with like a hopeful outcome that I guess you can measure in serum your TMAO before and after Allison versus not and see if there's a difference, but... Are there any clinical trials that demonstrate any efficacy of injectable or oral L-carnitine? With carnitine, the results are mixed. Some of it looks promising and then some of it doesn't. So if this is one of those things where you largely go by anecdotes and with it being a natural amino acid, a lot of people that use it, it depends on their baseline circumstance too. The deficient will obviously yeah, like, get I mean, more. It, it, exactly. Like you could sort of see a, see a scenario where somebody's like a vegan and there are oh, a huge benefit then, obviously then, then you might see well maybe the risk is worth the payoff but if you're an omnivore who happens to eat red meat mm. i don't know maybe maybe it's less so i'm sure if you saw the data you would not be convinced that it's worth trying so i'll just put that out yeah. there for people who watch your stuff i don't think that they would blindly want to inject this so this is a con the reason people find it very attractive is because it works through a different vector people anecdotally have seen muscle growth outcomes on the same dose of anabolics or lesser so and a grow leaner when they use it so it's not like there's literature to show when you're on testosterone plus carnitine you get better results than just test but that's what people claim and seems to be at least somewhat reproduced anecdotally but you know that's uh speculative i would not hang my hat on that and be like i recommend for sure you take this so just putting that out there um i don't think it's a potent fat burner by any means which is like the subsection we're kind of talking about as far as caffeine super reliable one of the best things you could do you know where the data lies for upper tolerability and safety i think the fda even has like a threshold amount that they say you're good to take it's like 400 which is pretty significant um and yeah you can get some level of increased energy expenditure from that but largely the benefit from the stimulant category i would say comes from the increased energy you have even as you go deeper into a deficit as well so as you enter into nutrient deprivation territory it becomes a lot harder to even move subconsciously let alone actually fuel your everyday activities so i'm not to say you should become a caffeine addict to support your deficit and it's not necessarily sustainable but it's if you were going to use something to help attenuate an energy deficit or you know one day where you need a bump like caffeine is certainly a reliable way to do it that increases metabolic output but also reliably increases performance in the gym and has appetite suppressing qualities and has safety data simultaneously so i would you know pretty blindly recommend caffeine for most people short of like special circumstances you mentioned yo him being earlier yeah so, so let's say more about that so that is a alpha-2 adrenergic antagonist. And when it comes to some of these like adrenergic type receptors, it gets kind of confusing because some of them will have like, even though it's an antagonist of the alpha-2 receptors, it will have stimulatory effects, but contradictory to what you'd expect from a stimulant. It's not vasoconstrictive the same way you might get from a amphetamine or like essentially any other stimulant that works well. So this stuff raises adrenaline signaling very significantly. And there is thought that it could liberate free fatty acids via the adrenergic signaling that you could then, you know, like take advantage of during exercise. Now is the energy expending component of it worth hanging your hat on i would say no but the adrenaline inducing component is substantial enough that some people really really enjoy the use of it in their training and get a uptick in energy that is markedly different than through a adenosine receptor antagonism which is which caffeine. is caffeine yeah so like it feels much more racy and aggressive than caffeine and it's almost like a subject how does it compare to like ephedrine ephedrine i believe is a beta 2 receptor agonist off the top of my head i could be wrong on that but it is less euphoric i would say and more like adrenaline spiking so you feel more like it's almost borderline anxious to a degree where you have and a how sense long of urgency does it, how long does it last um johan bein half-life can't recall off the top of my head, but it's relatively but short. But is it the lived. type of thing that people take for the workout when they're in yeah. calorie deficit? Typically, you would take it before cardio 
or before training is the typical application. But interestingly enough, it's also used as an aphrodisiac and can enhance erections which is weird because you wouldn't expect that from yeah, a stimulant. About to say, and also like that doesn't seem like the right mix of <laughs> things to be super anxious and, you know, irritable. Sure. Yeah. But it has the, that's one of the things where it's like, is this a drug for you? Cause if you happen to get an uptick in performance in exercise performance, and then also you get some sort of uptick in libido and or enhanced bedroom performance later in the day, could be attractive it is not something that is uh i would typically reserve it for a deficit whereby you have tried all standard low-hanging fruit options and you're kind of okay now i need to actually boost my energy in some way that is not like i'm at my wits end for i can't lower cardio do more cardio or reduce my intake of calories anymore without it being overwhelming or I'm just in like a very deprived energetic state or I got low sleep and I need to acutely modulate it. So I don't use it as, I wouldn't use it as much as caffeine. Caffeine, I would like very easily recommend daily use in a diet. I think this is something that's more use case specific and not as reliable.